There are a few areas in my home that are pain spots. Like I just can't seem to get the organization like dialed down in a couple of areas. And one of those areas is this bathroom counter, you guys. <laughs> when I get ready for the day, um, I know it doesn't look like I use a ton of products, but I do and they're all over this counter. <laughs> so the counter constantly looks like I just dumped a pile of stuff all over it and hi, it's me. <laughs> I'm the problem. Dave has like a toothbrush out. Everything else is mine. So in today's video, I am going to take you through some of my pain points in my house and my effort to be more organized using my friend Clutterbug. Do you know Cass from Clutterbug? I'm using her tips today. Things she has told me to do, we're gonna try them out, see if they work for me. Do her organizing systems work for someone as messed up as myself? We're gonna take a look. So we're starting with the bathroom and her get ready bin. So, oh, I should probably take this off. I just have this bin from Walmart. It was only a couple of dollars. I did measure the drawer. So a few years ago, I tried to organize my bathroom drawer, you know, like the Pinterest with clear acrylic, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't work. It doesn't work, it, it's awful. So the plan is everything I need to get ready goes into this bin and it goes in and then it comes out and then it goes back in, clean bathroom counter all of the time. We are going to give this a go right now. If you wanna know the size and everything, this is the bin I am using. So first things first, put everything I use to get ready in said bin, and then I gotta open up that drawer, and I think we're just gonna toss a bunch of crap, so let's get going. I don't have a problem, you have a problem. You know, along this process, I find things I wanna to talk to you about. I don't know if you guys have Chacos. I've always wanted a pair. I finally got a pair for Mother's Day. Um, huge Mother's Day sale at our outdoor, like sporting goods store. Check it, are you dying? I'm so excited to wear these. But they have like instructions on how to adjust the straps. Who knew that you needed instructions on how to wear shoes? Not me. I also went to Sephora um, and I was looking for a new makeup palette. The one I wanted, they didn't have any in store. And the guy that was helping me, he was like, oh, these are super, super good. So here are the colors of it. I actually don't like it that much. So like, should I just throw it away? Dawn would say, just throw it away. It's brand spanking new. I'm gonna text my friend and see if she wants it. She loves makeup. I don't have the heart in me to throw this away because I used it literally one time. I'm texting her right now. These things always take longer than you think. Cleaning pays off, literally. Okay, next up is the drawer. I think I am going to throw a lot of things away here. Things I thought I would use, things I don't use. It's just gonna be... Uh... You know when you're a dumpster fire and you buy products and hopes that they will fix your mess and then they don't? That's where I am right now. <laughs> you know the one thing I'm never gonna have to declutter it's my Helix mattress. Let me tell you about them real quick. This video is sponsored by Helix Sleep. Their Memorial Day sale is running right now and it's a great time to upgrade your mattress. You can get 25% off of your purchase for a limited time only. So check out my link down below. We took this online quiz because we're different. He sleeps on his back and I sleep a little rolly around me. And we have the Sunset Lux, which is the softest mattress that they make actually. You know, I was not a big soft mattress guy until we got married. Oh, I love it now. You do love it. I love it. It's so, it's like the perfect amount of support and the perfect amount of soft. Oh yeah. I really prefer a softer mattress. So that one works well for me, but they have much firmer mattresses if that is something that works for you. The biggest problem with a Helix mattress is you won't like going on vacation. Every time I go on vacation, I'm worried about the bed because it's not gonna be my bed and it's not as comfortable. Honestly, shopping for a mattress is super annoying. This one's pretty easy because it's just shipped to your house. It arrives in your front door in a box and you bring it into the room and you open the box and then <laughs> Yep. It's all fluffed up. You could sleep in it that night. I was always worried, like, what if I buy the wrong mattress? And I'm not happy. Like, it's a huge investment. But they have a 100-night sleep trial. So if you don't like it, for any reason, they'll refund you. You know, there's a wide range of price levels with Helix, which I love. So you can get 
one of the more basic models. If you're more budget conscious, you can really invest in one of the Lux lines if you want to. They have payment plans, financing options if you need that. And for a high quality product that you're gonna be using every single day, eight hours a day or more hopefully, for like 10 plus years, I think it's worth it. Oh, and did I mention that you can get up to 25% off of your mattress and two free pillows with the Memorial Day sale going on right now. It's the biggest discount ever. Helixsleep.com slash RigglefitMom. We love it so much. We got one for like all of our kids. Yeah. And they all have the same one. They all have the sunset look. So if we have company and they don't like soft mattresses, they're sleeping at a hotel. <laughs> In fact, I might tell them that. Yeah. So one more time, helixsleep.com slash RigglefitMom. First link down below. You're not gonna regret it. It's the best mattress, man. I love it. The next thing Cass taught me was the 21 item toss. Now she does this every week at her house. Every week, she takes a bag like this and finds 21 items to either throw away or donate. So, oops, I'm gonna do that right now. I have a donation box in my garage at all times. So sometimes I'll be walking around, I'll be like, this one's going bye-bye, and we'll go put it in the box. But right now, we are going to do a focused 21 item toss, mostly donations, and I do have a pile right behind me, so Come on. So this is mostly clothes. Let's count them together. One, because I gotta make sure I have 21 things. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Okay, I'm at 11, but I do wanna talk about one of these. So I bought these two shirts from Gap, like, three months ago and I'm already getting rid of them because they have worn horribly. Like I'm just shocked at how quickly they're pilling and look dingy when I've only had them for a couple of months. So this is your reminder that when you purchase clothing, the quality of the item matters because I have some shirts that I've had for 10 years and they still look great versus this shirt that was at Gap for on sale, it was cheap. And three months later, I'm getting rid of it because it doesn't look good anymore. And that's really frustrating to spend your money and have it be wasted. So just, just something I've been thinking about. Okay, I was 11, right? 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. These two pairs of shorts, I just don't feel confident in the way they fit. 16. If you don't love it, it's a no. That's how you do clothes. I do use this bag often. I just got a replacement. I don't need two that are the same style. Gone, that's number 17. Here's 18. I love this cardigan, I've had it for multiple years, but I didn't wear it one time this last winter, not once, gone. What number was I at? <laughs> 18, is that 18? So I need three items to go. Let's go see what else we can find. 18 items so far. Three more. I got it, three more items. These two pairs of sandals, while I like, I have a better pair of sandals that are extremely similar to both and that I will choose over these, right? So these don't make sense. 19, 20, 21. And I think it's important to mention that this is 21 items out of essentially my closet. <laughs> I didn't touch kitchenware living room, any of my kids stuff. This was just my stuff. We didn't even talk about books. I've been looking at my books recently and I'm like, why am I keeping these books? I haven't read these in 10 years. It does feel like cutting off fingers, but I think we have a problem and I think we can make a difference. So I'm gonna take this bag out to my car immediately and then have one of my kids donate it because that's why you have kids, to do all of the chores. Welcome to my kitchen. You may have been here before, you may have not been here before, but another thing that Cass talks about is getting everything off of your kitchen counters. And sometimes people are like, well, I use my toaster every day, I use my blender every day, I don't have room in my cabinets for them. So she talks about something that I've actually been doing for a while, but maybe you have not heard. Maybe you don't know who Cass is. That's okay. I'm sure you will go check her out after this because she is awesome, she is hilarious and has great tips on organizing when you're a naturally messy person. I mean, I want it to look like I have my life put together, but I don't really have my life put together. She says, if you have things in your cabinets or pantry that are not used regularly, they get reallocated somewhere else. So your roasting pan, 
like I don't use that very often. My huge, huge mixing bowls, that's a once a month or less often item. I've reallocated those to my basement. So I actually do have quite a bit of room to store things off of my counter. Now there are two things I use every single day. One is the blender. Even though we use the blender every single day, it has always stayed in the cabinet. But the one that she said that blew my mind was the toaster. Even if you use the toaster every day, unplug it and shove it in a cabinet. My friends, that's what I did. And she said, you don't want crumbs in your cabinet, no sweat find a little tray to put it in crumbs go in the tray not in your cabinet shelf moving the toaster changed everything my kids came home from school and they were like whoa the kitchen is so clean all i did was move the toaster that was the only thing i did differently and now my kitchen looks really freaking put together almost all of the time i'm already pretty good about doing the dishes so that's not an issue for me it helps that i have a dishwasher but here are the only things I keep on my countertops at all times. Over here, I have condensed down my two, I had two of these totes. I decluttered some items and condensed it to one. And over here, I do have my little turntable with my very often used items. Olive oil, another oil, pepper, the Pam spray, avocado oil. I do use all of these and I do like the little turntable thing. They don't, they don't really fit up here and this works for me. Okay, friends, it is a week later and I wanted to give you an update on how everything is staying. Is it staying clean? The kitchen without the toaster working so well. I even got rid of the little container that houses like the soap, the hand soap and the sponge. And I put it on this thing over the sink instead of over here. So the kitchen counter really looks clean most of the time. The get ready basket in the bathroom has changed everything. <laughs> Dave took a look at it and he was like, oh, this is such a great idea. Just to be clear, like, am I the problem? And I was like, I don't think you're the problem. I think I'm the problem. And he was like, I don't think I'm the problem. A week later, it has been confirmed I was the problem. I was the mess maker on the bathroom counter because now that I'm keeping everything in that bin in the drawer, nothing's out. <laughs> it's amazing. And what's even better than that is now that everything's off of the counter, I can see when it needs to be actually cleaned, not picked up but cleaned. Those are totally different things. I spend all of my time picking up instead of deep cleaning, which is actual cleaning. So now that I don't have to spend time picking up, I can be like, oh, I can give this mirror a quick wipe. I can give this counter a quick wipe. Easy peasy. And since it's been a week since I decluttered 21 items, I did take them to the donation center. They're gone. I thought we would go around and do another 21 items today, one week later. So I do have a little pile over here that I kind of already started. So I thought I would do some kitchen items. I have some white bowls display items that were given to me a long time ago. I don't use these very often. Uh, it's kind of a weird shape. I don't know. It's, I mean, it's microwave safe, but it's not oven safe. It just doesn't make sense to me. So number one, table runner that's too short. Number two, more of my clothes. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Something else I wanted to work on was my cookbooks. So a lot of them are in this closet right here. This uh, used to be my office. I feel like there's a lot in here that I, I got from thrift stores and things like that and I ended up not using them. So I feel like now's a good time to eliminate these. In case you're wondering, I now no longer have an office in my house. This is a, a bedroom. <laughs> I'm gonna pull out a few cookbooks. One, two, good old Martha Stewart. Number three, four. Man, what's, what's with the lighting situation here? Wow. If I go all dark, does that, does that work better? That does not work better. Let me just make a pile and I'll show you in the other room. Okay, to my nine clothing items, I've got 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 items. Let's go find two more. Here we go. 20, 21. I have a lot of cutting boards and this one's like really, really small. I haven't reached for this one in a year and I have other platters I like better. This is a Dollar Tree one. It's super flimsy. There you go. 21 items. My friends, I don't know if you have been following my declutter journey. I have been decluttering my house essentially since 2020. Methodically, I have taken truckload after truckload to the garbage to donate. And in the last two weeks, I have still managed to eliminate 42 items from my house. And I'm just gonna keep going. <laughs> I'm gonna get to the point where every single thing I have in my house, I use and I love. So I am really grateful to people like Cass who give simple tips to help you feel better in your spaces. Like 
taking everything off of your kitchen counters. If you have not tried to move your blender and your toaster and just get them off, I'm telling you, try it. If you have not taken a black trash bag and tried to eliminate 21 items once a week in your house, try it. Everything just looks cleaner and tidier with a lot less effort. So Cass, thank you from the bottom of my heart and from my family because they are really appreciating a more picked up home. Thanks for hanging out with me today. And remember, if you wanna get that deal from Helix, get yourself an awesome mattress. It's the first link down in doobly-doo. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Welcome to the after show. I don't know what your summer plans are. My summer plans are odd because my kids are doing kind of a lot of camps and there's many weeks during the summer where it's only me and my 11 year old son because all the older kids are gone at camps like at the same time. One of the weeks, even my husband is gone because he's in charge of the, like this adventure camp. So the question on the table is, what kind of fun activities can I do with my 11 year old when it's just me and him? And do we travel and go hang out with some family? Like, do we go see some cousins? Do we go see aunts and uncles? I've never had this experience before. Since I became a parent, like, well, I just had like a baby and then I had my second kid. I haven't been alone with one kid in so long, like in 16 years. And I've never been alone with one kid that was this capable. I don't really know how to handle this. It's, it's a whole new experience for me. And my second thought has absolutely nothing to do with my first thought, but it's this. I go to the grocery store and I am shocked, shocked and horrified by some of the prices that I am seeing. Do you feel the same way? Are you like, what in the ever loving bleep is happening? Do you feel that way? And so sometimes I feel like maybe I need to make some more of those uh, budget meal plans and show you guys some ideas and then it, like I'm thinking, have we seen it all? Have they all been done? Like, do you really wanna see oatmeal and beans and rice again? This is the question I pose to you. Let me know down in the comments your opinion on that. I have been making food content on YouTube for seven years. Like, you want me to redo the same ones? Have you not seen the old ones and you want me to make new ones? Like, I don't know. I don't know what to do here. So I would really love your input on this one. Once again, thank you for hanging out and I hope you have an amazing day.